In this video, I want to go over some last minute preparation for the IMAT exam. As we know, it's only a few weeks away at this stage and you really shouldn't be cramming any new information or topics, but instead finalizing your strategy and strengthening your weaknesses. So we're going to start the video by talking about everything you need to do to prepare for the day of the exam, how you're going to start studying for the exam. We're going to go over a few brief tips for the exam itself, such as question strategies, some things you can implement to better prepare coming up to the exam and the day of the exam. I'm going to end the video on a very, very important tip, so make sure that you stay around for that. Starting up with how you're going to prepare for the day of the exam, you need to make sure that you know the instructions for your test center. Every test center around the world has different times that you need to show up. Some might require you to register two hours before the exam's time, and others might only want you to show up an hour before. Please make sure that you know exactly what time you need to show up for your exam. If you show up later than the two hour mark, they will not let you in. I know students who had to wait for the next year to redo the exam. You should also know exactly where the test center is. That means looking it up on Google Maps, figuring out how you're going to get there, what type of transportation are you going to take? What route does it take? If that transportation is down, what are you going to do instead? Based on how you're going to get there and what time you need to get there, you need to figure out what time you're going to wake up at. Are you going to have breakfast? What are you going to have for breakfast? And it might seem silly to prepare for this like so early on, but trust me when I say on the day of the exam, you're already going to be stressed and you're going to be nervous. You do not want to start falling behind and get lost and not know where your uh, test center is. You want to know where the closest bathroom is. And what's even more important than that is if you're traveling to your test center, say by plane in another country, and you're going to have to start waking up early, you need to start implementing that into your routine now, okay? If you need to wake up at 5 a.m. to catch a plane to sit the exam, and at the moment you're rolling out of bed at noon, you are going to be so messed up for that day. You're going to be absolutely exhausted, you're going to feel so out of balance, and you're already going to feel stressed for the exam. Trust me when I say, like, you do not want to find out on the day of the exam how it's going to go. Take the time now to figure out all of the steps, okay? Um, also figure out what you're going to eat, when you're going to eat, because you do not want to do something different on the morning of the exam. If you usually don't drink coffee, do not pick the morning of the exam to have coffee to have some sort of mental boost. Because I'm not even joking, but something known as exam bowels is very, very real. It is very normal to feel like you need to go and poop on the day of an exam. If you have coffee, like your insights are going to be wreaking havoc. Please be prepared for the day and start implementing the exam routine now. Getting up at the same time, eating what you're going to be eating, and that's going to lead on to the next part of the video where we're going to talk about how you're going to start studying for the exam. So if you know that your exam is going to be at 11 a.m. in your test center, what you want to do is you're going to wake up every single morning at the time that you would wake up for that morning and do your normal routine. And at 11 a.m., you're going to sit an exam in the exact same conditions. Right. So that means if you register one hour beforehand, have a parent like check your uh email confirmations, check your ID, go into another room without a phone and just with the clock, have the papers in front of you, like cross match the numbers and make sure that you are sitting everything in exam conditions. Okay, like literally everything. Trust me when I say I know the neurophysiology behind this. It sounds really, really extra, but our brains love routine and they love association and they love like everything to do with familiar. And if you have done this 10 times, if you have sat 10 IMAT exams in the exact same conditions as the one when you're going to sit it, your brain is going to love you for it. Your anxiety is going to be a lot lower because your body is just going to be like, oh yeah, we've done this 10 times before. Like I said, have a parent check your email confirmations and your ID and sit down and really get used to cross-referencing the numbers. This is so, so, so important. If you score maximum numbers and you come first in Italy, but you wrote the uh, the numbers wrong on the papers or the barcodes, your exam results will be eliminated. You will not be able to rank. Like you will get your score saying that you scored the maximum amount of notes, but you won't be placed into the ranking and you will use, lose your spot. So it is so important that on the day when you are feeling stressed and you are feeling nervous, that you are not going to fumble and uh, miss checking that. Because again, you've already done it 10 times. So most important thing is that you're going to start sitting the exam in exam conditions. The second you finish the exam, you're going to go through your incorrect answers and you're going to one by one go and find out why you didn't score correctly. 
Okay, I'm not talking about you're just going to look up the answer and then be like, oh, okay, okay, this was the correct answer. This is what I should have said. You're not going to do that. You're going to go to that exact chapter and be like, okay, this is exactly why I got it wrong. You're going to relearn that chapter. You're going to understand exactly what you did wrong and how you should have done it. And then when you go and do that for every single question that you got wrong, go back to the very start and with no reference, resolve those questions and don't just be like, oh yeah, I remember the answer was this, okay? Sit and actually pretend like you're explaining it to someone who doesn't know. Go through that question with that parent or that friend and be like, okay, and in this question, we would answer it like this because X and Y. If you cannot clearly explain the concept to someone who knows nothing about it, you do not understand the concept. Okay, this is really, really important. And I really wish I understood this earlier in, in my academic career. But if you cannot clearly explain a concept to someone who knows nothing about it, you do not fully understand it. So go through that exam again, after you've learned all the concepts, sit and really work through it and answer correctly. Not just, oh yeah, I remember it was this, but actually, okay, this is what I need to do to solve this question correctly. In two or three days, do the exact same thing with a new exam, same conditions. You're going to finish the exam. You're going to go through it. You're going to mark your incorrect answers. But this time, what you're going to do differently is you're going to cross-reference the past exams you've been doing and mark the topics that you are getting wrong. Okay. If let's say you've done four exams in two weeks and in all four exams, you keep getting genetics questions wrong. There is something that you are missing like fundamentally in the core concepts of genetics. You need to go back to the genetics chapter or the genetics videos and completely redo it and reassociate it in your brain. Okay, because you should not be consistently getting the same topics of questions wrong. And this is how you are going to strengthen your weaknesses within a week or two. Like literally over three exams, if you just figure out what topics you keep struggling with and then strengthen those, it's going to make all of the difference in the world. So let's move on to a few of the actual exam tips and strategies. First of all, you need to only focus on high yield things at this stage. Maths and physics, there are only eight questions. There is no point in you going and trying to learn all of maths and physics from scratch. Do not go and learn all of the curriculum at this stage. What you can do is find the patterns of questions that they ask in maths and physics and just focus on those types of questions. I sat the IMAT five years ago and I can still remember that there was like, there's almost always an electrical uh, circuit question. There is almost always a question on figuring out the formula for the area of like a geometrical shape. I remember that there is almost always also a gravity question, right? So instead of trying to study the entire curriculum, go and find the patterns of questions that they ask the most and just focus on being able to solve those to the best of your abilities. There's no point in trying to just in case prepare for eight questions when you can 100% know you're going to get four correctly. This also goes for the logical reasoning portion of the test. I still remember that they have those questions that are like, there are three clowns. Clown A has blue, has a blue nose and green shoes. Clown B has pink nose, blah, blah, blah. These types of questions are repeated all the time and you can actually learn how to solve them, right? It says logical reasoning, but there are actually systems and hacks and strategies that can help you quickly solve these. Go and find the patterns and just focus on learning how to solve these patterns. This is focusing on high yield things. There is no point at this stage trying to cover and cram everything, but you can actually focus on what you know and what you can high yield cover. The next thing is you have to have to have to remember that there is negative marking for incorrect questions. This means do not guess randomly. If you come across a question and you have no idea how to solve it, cut your losses. Do not try to answer that question and guess because you are going to be marked negatively for it, right? If you just think about it, there are 60 questions. If you answer only 30 of them, confidently, you will get 45, which will guarantee you an entrance in most of the universities, right? You just need to get half of the questions correct. Now, if you finish the exam early, which you probably will, because a lot of people don't realize when they're like pumped full of adrenaline, how much faster they're moving through the questions, go back to some of the questions that you think that you can solve and eliminate one or two of the answers and then take a guess. Just by eliminating one answer, you actually increase your odds so much of guessing correctly. But again, if you have no idea, it is not worth the risk when you are going to be taking marks away from your correct answers, okay? This test does not reward people who know the most. It rewards people who test the best. And the way you're going to test the best is focus on high yield things, figure out strategies, and make sure 
that you are putting the odds in your favor by not guessing when you have no idea. Try to eliminate a few if you can and then guess based on that. Okay. The other thing is like, please just calm down when you're going through the paper. The last thing you want to do is on the answer sheet, skip one question by accident or like mark the same line for two and your entire answer grid slides up. I'm telling you every year I see people come out of this exam and they are like crying, they're bawling their eyes out because they get to the end of the exam and realize that there are two questions that they didn't answer and look back and realize their entire answer sheet has been shifted up. Okay. Take an extra second for each question and each answer. Take a moment before you mark everything and double check everything. It might seem like a waste of time, but again, you only need, okay, even let's say 35 or 40 correct answers. That's all you need. You just need 40 correct answers. You need to make sure that you are not in a hurry and you're not going to let your grid slide and make some sort of silly mistake like this. Okay, so let's talk coming up to the day and the day of. Of course, I'm going to tell you the classic things. Try to start cutting out sugar now. Try to exercise beforehand. Uh, a lot of people don't want to accept this, but when you exercise, your body releases something called BDNF, which is brain-derived neurotropic factor. It's basically like growth serum for your brain. It is very, very effective to boost your learning and your memory. It would be great if you can start implementing some little exercise uh, before you start studying and before the exam. But again, the morning of the exam, if you never exercise, do not pick that morning to wake up at five and go for a 10 kilometer run because you are just going to throw yourself out of balance. Uh, try to start cutting out sugars now because they're usually quick release and will cause crashes. Um, try not to have big breakfasts because again, that's going to cause all of the brain to rush to your stomach. Uh, there's usually fight and flight, but there is rest and digest. And if you eat a big breakfast before the exam, you're going to get very sleepy and you're going to start like you know, not thinking very well during the exam. So these are, I know, like kind of repeated all the time, but trust me, if you start implementing them now for the next few weeks, it is going to make a huge, huge difference. The night before the exam and the morning of, okay, this is a time where your mindset becomes crucial. Like you do not want to be cramming and stressing, worrying about what you didn't cover. Trust me, like, trust me, I have now helped hundreds of students and it will be so detrimental if you are stressed the night before about what you haven't covered, if you're not gonna be able to sleep and you're gonna wake up stressed the night before, just try to chill, watch a movie, listen to music, whatever relaxes you. If that's playing video games and that's going to help you get into the mindset, do. Sleep well, wake up the next morning, maybe just do a few flashcards about formulas and common topics and high yield things. But the difference between a student who knows really, really well and is anxious and a student who is kind of prepared, but they're very calm and collected, I will guarantee you their results will be very different because <laughs> I'm the student who is just calm before going into the exam. And I have outperformed a lot of my friends in this exam just from the fact that they get really nervous before written exams and it causes them to panic and tank and their mind's absolutely blank. Like how many times have you come out of an exam and you've thought to yourself, oh, I knew the answer to this. The reason why you then know it is because you're not under that stress and panic. So please make sure that you are in the right mindset, you are confident, you are, <laughs> you are calm and collected. And I know that's a lot easier said than done, but trust me, if you start preparing and getting into the routine and sitting the exam in exam conditions, coming up to the exam, it's going to be half the battle. During the exam, if you start getting flustered, if one question throws you off, just take a moment, close your eyes and take one minute to breathe in and breathe out. It might seem like it's a waste of time, but if you spend the next 30 minutes frantically answering things incorrectly and you can't recall them, wasting five minutes is going to seem like such a better option. Just breathe. Don't let one bad question throw off the rest of the exam, okay? Always just try to breathe be cool, be collected. Just remember, you only have to answer like 30 to 40 questions right to get in. On the day of the exam, this is so, so, so important. On the day of the exam, at the end, when you are handing up your sheets, you are going to need to stick barcodes on them. This part is so crucial. I know so many, okay, I know, I personally know too, but I have heard horror stories of so many students who stuck the barcodes on wrong and couldn't get into their course. I know two personal students that this happened to and they had to wait for the next year. Please take a moment when you are handing in your sheets to make sure that the barcodes are stuck on properly and that like you have done it correctly. The person is just going to sit there and wait for you to do it. They're not going to even be like, oh, and okay, then you stick this one onto this. You're just going to go up and they're going to be like, okay, do it. And you're going to be so lost, but 
Basically, your question sheet and your answer sheet are unique to your student number. They do this so that you can't cheat. The people who are next to you have different question papers than you. The questions will be the same, but the order is completely different. And they do this so that you can't cheat off of the people next to you. So when you go up to hand in your exam, this is why it's so important that you cross-reference the numbers. And when you're sticking the barcodes on, you make sure that you do it correctly will be eliminated from the exam. This is the tip that a lot of people don't do and don't know. When you stick your barcode on, just before you hand it over, try to memorize as many of the numbers from the end and middle as you can. Like when, you're, when you stick it on and when you're handing it up, just try to memorize the last few numbers, ideally from the middle onwards. Because what a lot of people don't know is in a few weeks after the exam, before the results are announced, they release something called the anonymous ranking that doesn't have anyone's names, but everyone's scores and their barcodes. If you know the last few digits of your barcode, you can search it in the PDF and know what you scored weeks before your results will actually come out. Okay, so this is like a tip you're only gonna find here, I guess. Um, but yeah, make sure that you do that. So I have been talking for a very long time. Um, if you want to know more about the timeline, what to expect day of the exam, I wrote an article, which I'll link in the description and the comments. If you've made it this far in the video, please let me know what your first choice university is, just because I think it's fun to get to know you guys. And, you know, we might be colleagues in a few months. And yeah, let me know if you want to see anything else. Also, if you share this video with someone you know who's sitting the exam, that would also be great. I think it's going to be very helpful for everyone. And yeah, see you in the next video.